Hi, my name's Julie Turner. I'm a hydrologist for the Bureau of Land Management. Water quality is basically measuring the conditions of the stream. And it's measured by the physical, the chemical, and biological characteristics. And today I want to talk to you mostly about the chemical and the physical. The first one I'm going to start off with is temperature, which is a phys physical characteristic. So temperature measures the heat of something. And we also want to talk about why it is that temperature is important to salmon. So when you get hot, what do you do? You take off your coat or your hat, go into an air-conditioned room, or eat a popsicle. Well, fish can't really do that. So we can change our environment, but the fish really can't. So salmon, I have this chart, and when they're spawning, we're looking at 44 degrees Fahrenheit to 58 degrees Fahrenheit. That's ideal for spawning salmon. So when water heats up, the molecules, H2O in the water, they get jiggy. They like move around and bump and bang into each other and they expand. And that's important. So remember this part throughout the talk here about how when they get jiggy and they move around and jump, some of those oxygens pop off. So we're going to go to the stream over here and we're going to take the temperature of the stream water. So the temperature is measuring about 43 degrees Fahrenheit, which is within the parameters for spawning salmon. So we're going to measure the temperature in some warmer water because those water molecules behave differently in cold water and in hot water. So this hot water is about 103, 103 degrees Fahrenheit. So what are some of the things that can change the temperature in a stream? If you look around, you see the trees in the riparian zone. They provide shade for the trees. So planting trees in the riparian zone helps with shade. So the next parameter I'm going to talk about is turbidity. Turbidity is measured in nephlometric turbidity units, which is quite a mouthful, and we just call them NTUs. So turbidity is basically a measure of the clarity of the water. So how clear is it? How turbid is it? And on this chart here, it gives us an idea of how many NTUs are good for fish in aquatic life. Now today we're not so concerned with what the actual NTUs are, but understanding the difference and what it means. So in a lake, like Crater Lake for instance, they have a huge disk with black and white lines on it attached to a rope called a secchi disc. And they lower that rope into the water. And when it gets to the point where they can just barely see it, that's called the secchi depth. Well, we have something similar here in this cylinder here that has black and white lines at the bottom that we can look at to see how turbidity works in a freshwater stream. So I'm gonna take some water out of the stream And you can see how clear the water is. And if you all were here with me, you could look down in there and see those white and black lines there. So what would happen if
take some soil and sediments. And I put it in here. And that, look at that. See the heavy, heavier sands? They settle out to the bottom first. And then we've got some finer silts in here that are settling out. But look at the top of the water column. So this is an example of like say a stream bank failure or a landslide, or this even happens when we do good things like uh, improve bridges or culverts for a short period of time. So the reason that this is important, I mean like why would this be important to fish? They're swimming along and they run into this really turbid water. Well, some folks might say, well, it's because the fish can't see. But you'll find out in another video why that's not true. But what happens is, if the sun was shining, the sun's rays come down and they hit that column of water. And those photon packets in the sun's rays hit those particles and heat them up and the light scatters. And all of those collectively getting heated in the water column heat the water. So it increases the temperature of the water for the fish. And that's why turbidity is important for fish. So now we're going to talk about dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen is a chemical property of the water. And we'll talk about why it's important to fish. We have a chart here that shows us the maximum dissolved oxygen concentration at various temperatures. So we're, we're concerned with uh, salmonoid spawning. So we want to go down to this bar graph. And we're looking about somewhere around 10 to above 14 for dissolved oxygen. So something about dissolved oxygen, what is it anyway? Well, it's just what it sounds like. It's oxygen dissolved in water. And I usually ask folks if we breathe oxygen. Well, actually we don't. We breathe air. And air is 80% nitrogen gas and around 18 to 21% oxygen and about 1% argon. Well, here's a graphic that you can see the oxygen in our atmosphere by these squares and then the oxygen in the salmon's water which is about 10 parts per million or 10 milligrams per liter. So we want to measure dissolved oxygen and we also want to remember about our jiggy uh, water molecules that pop off oxygen when um, the water heats up. So we'll get some water out of the stream. And then this ampule here has a reactant in it that's going to measure the amount of dissolved oxygen in the stream water here. And it's already starting to turn blue. And we just swish that around in there. And we also want to think about too um, how the dissolved oxygen um, measurement is changed in warmer water. And we'll look at that as well. Because cold water, you know, can hold more dissolved oxygen than warmer water. And that is why the relationship with temperature for all of these parameters is so important. And we can measure it directly and really easily and pretty accurately. So we have a, a testing kit. Here, I'll just hold this up here. Where we have uh, dissolved oxygen in parts per million uh, at different um, rates here, or concentrations actually. Um, and we can compare that. So we move along. This is from 1 to 12 here. 
and let's see, we're somewhere actually about almost 10. So our range for salmon is about 10 and above. So that's our cold water there. Then we'll take some warm water that we measured earlier, put it in here and see, see if there's a difference. This is something that I cooked up extra special for you folks. Now it's reacting. It actually seems a little quicker than the cold water. We stir it around. And it does. It looks like it looks different than the than the cold one. And this one is a cold one. So we were it's pretty dark. Almost about 10. And then the warm water one. Lay that down there. That's somewhere between five and six. So you can see the differences in the dissolved oxygen in the water. So now we're on to pH. What is pH? pH is potential for hydrogen. Why is hydrogen important? Well, because the pH scale is from zero to 14 graphic here, 0 to 14, with the more acids below neutral, 7 is considered neutral, so anything below is considered more acid, and above is considered more basic. And you can see some of these things on this graphic that show Coca-Cola, vinegar, battery acid, those are all pretty acid. So there's a lot more hydrogen ions in those acids. Above seven, we have things like antacids and bleach, which are more basic. So on this graphic, we go down here to salmonoids, about six and a half to eight is what they like. So we have a testing kit here where we can test the stream water. and see what this pH is. And you want to remember too the jigginess of the temperature as well because when those oxygens pop off of H2O, what's left? Hydrogen. So those hydrogen ions are what make the water more acidic. So we have what we call a wide range indicator here that we put 10 drops in, no more, no less. to measure the pH of the stream water. You can take this out and just kind of jiggle it around. Turn it up. So when I have folks here, they get to participate in all of this, which makes it a whole lot more fun. So on this scale here, it looks like we're hanging somewhere around 6.5 for the pH, which was within that range that we saw on the chart. So when those hydrogen ions concentrate in the water, that makes it more acidic. So what are some of the things that might make the water more acidic? Well, here in Oregon, Contributions from Douglas fir, hemlock, any of the conifers can do that, as well as the geology and soils. But it's a type of pH change that might impact the fish the most would actually be some sort of influent. So some, maybe a pipe coming from somewhere, some sort of pollutant. Sometimes fertilizers off of farms or things like that can change the pH. 
but mostly it's a mild change in the streams here, but we still want to measure that pH change.